Talo falava faka lo falahi atu ki orana malo ilale ni sambuli vinaka tena koto kato manwe lisuifua. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation to be a part of your conference today. Um, I've only been a minister for 112 days, so it's quite the privilege to be in a room with such powerhouse of people who house our families. Can I start by acknowledging the Community Housing Aotearoa leadership team for hosting this event and providing the platform for this talanoa. I also want to acknowledge local government members and ministry officials who are here as well to the community housing providers. I'm very much looking forward to hearing more about what you are doing to support Pacific housing opportunities. It is your commitment that will help us achieve a brighter future and to flip what the statistics tell us. And it's our job as a government to work with Pacific people and you to support and enable better housing in a genuine active partnership so that all Pacific families have safe health, safe, healthy and affordable homes. As we all know, Pacific families and communities have been disproportionately impacted by New Zealand's housing environment for decades. Uh, when I was a child, uh, we had up to 23 people living in our house. Um, our house was the transit lounge for our families when they migrated from Samoa. And we always had beds, or back in those days, mattresses on the floor, because when the day shift start, came home, the night shift went to work. Those were the sacrifices my parents made to ensure there was always a roof over our family's head. The unfortunate thing, though, is these challenges have only gotten harder for our Pacific families. These challenges have been exacerbated by the lingering impacts of COVID-19 and the recent severe weather events, which are sadly becoming more frequent. As I mentioned, statistics for Pacific housing paints the context of what we're working to solve, and it's a sobering picture for our communities. Statistics recorded as at March 2023 tell us that 26% of all households in public housing identify as Pacific. 17% of all households on the public housing register identify as Pacific. And over 45% of Pacific peoples live in damp housing and over 41% live in homes with visible mould. As our government, we're under no illusion. There is no single quick or easy fix to these and we need to work together. What is required is a series of actions with interconnected policy and funding that combines a responsive resource management system with more direct housing policies and solutions, including policies that are effectively targeted to the needs and aspirations of Pacific peoples. Put simply, we need to build more houses together. That is why we've launched Fale Mo Ainga, the Pacific housing strategy in just November of last year. Led by the three Pacific Housing Agencies, Ministry for Pacific Peoples, Housing and Urban Development and Kainga Ora, Whale Mo Ainga was born from stories and hopes that the Pacific community shared at regional Talanoa since 2018. Translating to Houses for Families, the strategy reflects our strong focus on home ownership as a means of transferring intergenerational wealth and reversing the socio-economic disadvantage that people, Pacific people face every day. The strategy sets out four key priority areas, building inter intergenerational Pacific wealth through home ownership, building affordable quality fit for purpose homes for Pacific families, developing and growing the Pacific housing sector, influencing and strengthening the housing system to improve housing outcomes for Pacific people. I want to see these priorities better support access to affordable quality housing and pathways to home ownership. That includes the take-up of the Pacific Building Affordable Homes Fund and Progressive Home Ownership Scheme for Pacific Families, schemes that helped my parents and family members in, into their own homes during the 1980s. In my own electorate, we were, we're putting money where our mouth is. Um, I want to acknowledge Eliana Roach, who is here from the C uh, Central Pacific Collective, um, through the Bought the Central Pacific Collective, with over $49 million allocated in Budget 2022, We've got the goal of building 300 homes over the next 10 years for Pacific families in eastern Porirua. This initiative provides an opportunity for local Pacific community to have a say in the design and development of the build, because a two to three bedroom home is inappropriate for intergenerational living. It is a tangible step for how we can build better for, for Pacific by Pacific. 
We are also building on the over $41 million investment we have made in Budget 2020 towards improving housing for Pacific Families and Communities Initiative. A key factor in this initiative is better financial literacy services so that families can cope with economic shocks and save towards home ownership. In 2021, the Ministry for Pacific Peoples launched the Pacific Financial Capability Development Programme. As a result of this work, we've already seen 15 providers contracted under this programme. Home ownership is becoming a realistic goal for over 2,000 Pacific people who have enrolled, with 80 families having bought their first home since the programme was launched. To give you an idea of what they learned, of what they learned is used, of how what they learned is used, 23 families have prevented the loss of their homes through mortgagee sales. Another success under Fale Mo Inga is that 725 Pacific households have completed the Pacific People's Pathway to Home Ownership Financial Literacy Programme through the Retirement Commission Programme. Of these, four families have bought new homes. Twelve Pacific churches are currently having feasibility reports developed on the land they own to explore housing development opportunities. Initial analysis shows that there is a potential to build 800 to 1,200 homes over 72 acres of land. And as part of the Pacific Building Affordable Homes Fund, the Ministry for Pacific Peoples is in contract negotiations with eight organisations to deliver up to 66 homes for Pacific families in Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch and South Otago. Six Pacific organisations are now also receiving support from the community housing provider CHIP Registration Support Programme and are on track to achieve CHIP registration by June 2024. I'm also aware that the team at Community Housing Solutions, the team who are behind today's conference, have been having a series of talanoa with Pacific organisations over the past few months, which will culminate in a new Pacific network of housing organisations. I look forward to seeing more Pacific providers joining Penina Trust and delivering housing solutions for Pacific peoples. Having more Pacific organisations will strengthen housing responses for Pacific and provide more tailored and culturally appropriate services. Achieving Pacific housing outcomes is growing momentum, but collectively, as a sector, we do need to get better. We have a whole generation of Pacific people who do not own their own homes, are facing homelessness, or in desperate need to have a place they can call home that is safe, warm, dry, and affordable. The work is completed, and I want to acknowledge Honourable Marama Davidson, who is also here today, my colleague and friend. We know there's more mahi to do. Working with the sector to deliver better housing outcomes for all New Zealanders, including our Pacific peoples and communities, is something I am committed to, and I know together we can continue to drive change. So that is the night shift heads out to work, that the day shift, day shift need not share the same bed. lava. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Greetings, mālo e lele, ki o rāna whakalofla i atu, Nisan Pulavinaka. Ae o kere i asa i ngale vai ngā momo o i ai le kuiakua. E mua mua o ngā u whaku loa ku sā mua i o pa ia mō sā. O le āle o o ai sa o whamakalanga. I nga nge isi se se kala o nga failea ma lape o le au aunga. Ai avea ia le nge i kula o ke whakwhenoa i a kuai i pa ia marama malu o a whia. Ku lou lou ku, ku lou lou kau kala. Tālo fa, tālo fa lava. My name is Tupuola Roine Le Alei Oloto and I'm the Chief Executive of Penina Trust. The minister's just stolen my thunder and my, the stats, so I won't go there. <laughs> and I must have heard a, a whispering because I said to David before my presentation, I never stick to a script, so forget the presentation I sent you, I'll just wing it. We've got the graveyard shift, and somebody once told me when you're speaking in a graveyard shift, if people are listen to you for about 10% of the time, and the rest of the time, they're, about, they're thinking about naughty little things they shouldn't be thinking about. 
So if I start to see people with smirks of their face, I know that saying was true. <laughs> but the goal to achieving housing, which is affordable, warm, dry, and secure, is clearly a goal for all, and as well as spouse in our housing strategic and policy directives in Aotearoa. Whilst acknowledging this, for Pacifica families, housing means so much more. Adequate housing is important to the health and well-being of Pacific people as a place where culture, language and community are strengthened. It is, a, it is crucial to ensuring fair, just and equitable society that is inclusive of the almost 400,000 people living in New Zealand who identify themselves as Pacific. As I listen to the minister's story of her growing up, I, it was like the mirror of my own. I came to New Zealand when I was five years old and now I'm 56 years old. And my cousins, uh, my cousins were pretty rebellious and um, said to me when I went to school, I couldn't speak a word of English. So they told me, when you go anywhere, you have to be grateful and you have to say, if you, wherever you go. <laughs> so I went to school and some, my teacher gave me a uh, piece of paper and I said, if you, and wondered why she looked at me. So, um, and by the, by the end of uh, the, the day, I was dragged into the toilets and then them, those uh, teachers could spank you and I got a spanking in the toilet because the whole day I kept saying, if you, and I wondered why people were upset. So now I've learned that actually means thank you, uh, that it was actually thank you. So, uh, um, but I too, you know, grew up in Ponsonby. Man, if we knew how Ponsonby would be this expensive, we would have said, mum, please buy us a house. But we grew up in, in state housing in Ponsonby, and I, the, most of my journey was about, you know, living from state house until we moved out to Mangere. And we had families come and go every day. Um, and my parents, we'd always say to them, how come you always say when we want something, you say, no money, no money, but when you bring your families from Samoa, there's plenty of money. So, you know, the journey for us, um, and it's, a, uh, you know, was paved with sacrifice, the journey for our parents. We know, what do we know about Pacific peoples? We know that we have Pacific peoples, 275,000 uh, Pacific people live in large family settings, and over half of them live with five or more people. You know, I, somebody said to me recently, are you sure, Ruine, that you want to pro provide public housing there? You know, there's only 23 extended family, uh, multi-generational families that require housing in Auckland. That's what the stats say. And that was said to me only last month. And the reality is we know is that's not true. Because a lot of our families, because they get discriminated in the housing sector, when, you know, it's been shown, the research has shown that the two things that, that landlords identified were their biggest things that they didn't want to go there is housing large families and housing young people. And so often, because we have got large families, we often get discriminated against in terms of access to housing. And so for our, our peoples, the struggle is real, and, the, and our communities, they're smart, they're pretty smart. So what you do is you tell people that you've got five people when you've got 20 people, and then you bring them in later. Hmm. And that is why often, you know, I was telling somebody is that we, you know, don't rely on those stats too much, because we do have families, larger families, that do need to be housed in this country. But our people are scared, to be honest about it. You know, I... Before my father passed away, he had this big thing he had to do was he got my sister to drive him to all our houses and he's, he wanted to see. It was his mental health to see and know that before he passed away, we were all in home ownership. And for him, it, in his generation, 
it meant that he could die peacefully knowing that we would be okay. And so, you know, for a lot of our communities, and it's been mentioned by the minister, home ownership, and I'll probably shift the focus to that now, is more just, is way more than bricks and mortars for these families. It's about being able to pass on knowledge, cultural knowledge, language. It's about being able to come together to commune with families. And it's also about the only hope, and it's been shown that it's their greatest um, ability to be able to pass on wealth. I jokingly said to my dad before he passed away, and I said, old man, you're going to break the mold, you know, in our family. And he said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, you're actually going to die and leave something to us. Most of our families, you know, always jokingly say, most of, you know, our families, they go and they, the Balangis die and they leave their kids a lot of money. And our, our, our families uh, die and they leave their kids their debts to pay off. <laughs> and so when he left, you know, money for my sisters and I, we looked at it with tears when we got it on the day that we, it came through our accounts because it represented their sacrifice. It represented their aspirations that their children wouldn't have to shift from school to school, their grandchildren, that, they, that their children had a hope of being able to, to grow and develop. That's why they did that. They didn't want to be, you know, they were the mum and dad investors in their, in their uh, homes that they lived in. They weren't doing this to get rich and, you know, to be the next Bill Gates. They did this because they wanted that was where they saw that was their only ability to be able to pass on wealth to the generations after them. And so home ownership is really important. We've been part of the financial capability programs and we're now with our PHO product, have now just bought some housing which we are working and we were looking to work in partner, we are looking to work in partnership with Habitat to be able to bring uh, more people into home ownership. Our fi financial capability program has not been the traditional. I asked somebody, how come your program has not touched many Pacific families? Tell me a bit about your program. And they said to me, oh, we run workshops three times a week. I said, stop, that's enough. Our families are too busy in the factories trying to earn overtime so they can save for a home. They don't have time to go to, to sit down in workshops for three times in the week. And, you know, some of the realities that we know within our communities is that, you know, our families, I, I ask the people in the, the cohorts that we work with, you know, you could think it's pretty unreal that because it's pretty unreal in Auckland to expect that you even have a piece of land. You know, you are lucky if you don't share driveways. But I ask people what they want, and even though to you it might seem really unreal, but a lot of them want a house where they don't have to share driveways, where they can hope to be able to, to have their kids play. Five children die each year in driveways. And I often look at the housing that we're building and saying, can we build smarter? Can we build in places like maybe build next to reserves where if we can't provide them that space, that they've got access to some, somewhere where the children can play? So moving forward, the journey for the sector, you know, I, today, this morning I felt quite guilty. I thought, oh, I, haven't, I haven't mentioned anywhere in my talk about my organisation. But then I realised I was actually not here to talk about my organisation. I was here to talk you know, on behalf of the Pacific sector. But, our, you know, in terms of a chip sector, I take off my hat to the work that is done. But for Pacific, from a very gentle reminder, our people need to maintain, to obtain their aspirations and be part of the solution. We're so tired of people doing things to us. So the, I welcome 
the upcoming chip sector, uh, Pacific chips that are coming on board, because it's been a lonely road to tow for the last seven years as a community housing provider. But we also need to be realistic about the journey that will take. I was just saying to the minister before she was telling me about the strategy, and we're, we're so happy that there's going to be a clear and coherent problem. Because one of the problems I had with the GPS, I think Charles talks about in a paper, is that we're really good at detailing what's wrong, but we're not very good at detailing how to fix it. And for Pacifica, the one element that we need to ensure is that we need our people to be there at the table. Because what you might think would really look good for us might not necessarily be. And one of the things I hope to see one of these days, because I've in the short time that I've been in this sector, I have realized that we also have an opportunity to build communities. It isn't just about building houses, it's about building lives. So on our builds, we're building multi-generational housing um, and where uh, MPP launched their strategy. Um, you know, we made clear decisions that may not be seen as too economical, I know. I remember I got invited to a cocktail party by, MPP, by um, HUD and they asked six economists one question, said, given three minutes, what do you think will resolve the housing crisis in, in New Zealand? Each one of them said to build as many houses on a piece of land as possible. Is that it? Is that, what, is, that, is that really our answer? Because for our communities, they want a piece of land where the kids can play. So as CHIPS, maybe the challenge for us is to find sites. Now I'm quite clear, we're not going to build down driveways. We are going to look at corner sites so people have direct access into their homes. Some of those things that, as Pacific people, we should have those simple little luxuries that others might think is frivolous. So, and, and so saying, is my time over? Okay, so I don't want to, I, I suffer from verbal diarrhea, so stop me at any time. Um, but in so saying, you know, I, it is so important to ensure that we include Pacific peoples. We're tired of people doing things to us. And we need to build wealth in our communities. We need to build our builders, our developers, because what I see, there's only a few people that are, that are building that. And our people, it always breaks my heart, because they're often the painters that do the legwork. They're often the builders that are wet when was wet weather. And, and, um, but they're not the ones that actually receive the bulk of the funding. And if we're serious about Pacific housing, we need to commit to ensuring that we look at a model that has an end-to-end -end process that includes Basfika and also creates wealth for Basfika. I'm just going to leave you with a song. Um, because in Basfika, we like to sing and... Uh, and also we like to acknowledge God. And where we're going to, this is a song called um, I'll, find, I'll Find You My Friend. <coughs> there was a place called the pre-existence where we lived with our family, dear. A council was called and plans were made. Free agency is why we're here. Our Savior said, please find my lost sheep and teach them. I 
I promise my Savior I'll find them and teach them the way to go. I'll go and find you, my friend. I'll help you. A Savior's plan is the way. Please accept me when I'll find you and we'll be back with him. And teach the sheep to find the iron rod.